Yo, 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 we live on location. Me and d still here in Orlando. We got a very, very special guest from my hometown, Chi-Town in the building today, coming to us live from Ann Arbor at his current location. We got Mr. Michigan, Mr. Fab Five, our OG. Straight up. One of the best dudes to do it, Juwan Howard. Legend. Victory! <laughs> Legend. Thanks for having me, fellas. Appreciate it, man. It's an honor to be on here with you guys today, bro. Much love. First off, we want to thank you. I'm proud for you to be one of my OGs, man. And thank you for coming on there. Yes, sir. Brought to you by Thigh Stop. That means a lot, man. And first, first and foremost, I want to say to you guys, man, that I'm so proud of y'all, man, as far as the growth. And I remember, uh, you know, when I was in the league and I was reading you know, a lot of newspaper clippings about Chicago basketball and uh, D. Miles, you know, even though you're from East St. Louis and I don't want the East St. Louis listeners to get mad at me, <laughs> but we adopted you in Chi-Town, bro. Yeah. And so, like, I was always, you know yeah, I was always, like, you know, following your career, so proud. You know, I was, like, you know, beat my chest. You know, watching you work out there on the floor and then also reading, you know, like you know, what who you are and what you're all about and to see the growth, you know, through the league. Uh, and then also today, man, you know, I'm so proud, man. you real, real talk. And, uh, you know, every time I'm always repping Chi-Town and, you know, not, I, I want to get to Q. You know, he talk about Southside, you know, young boy from Roseland. Um, <laughs> you know, in, in uh, Whitney Young, Chicago Public League, tearing it up. You know, uh, many have questioned, you know, his skill set, and he's proven everyone wrong every time he stepped on the floor because of the toughness, competitiveness, and skill set he's displayed. Um, I've been a big fan of DePaul, you know, from that class that you played with. Uh, I'm from Michigan, man, all the way through the heart. <laughs> but when I seen that DePaul class of all Chi Town dudes, man, I was so happy. I was y'all biggest supporter. And then to see cute growth, and then you guys join together with the Clippers. Oh, wow. Like, I played against y'all, but I was like, yo, every <laughs> summer, these boys are working on their game. Yeah. You know, coming to Tim Grover's gym, playing pickup, coming in the morning, getting your work in on the court, hitting the weight room, being consistent with it, you know, every summer. You know, people didn't see that behind the scenes. And then y'all go out there to L.A. and rep shop. And uh, really, you know, put the mark on like the L.A. Clipper brand and to start your own brand. So, you know, I can keep going on and on and on about your careers, but I'm so proud, man. I'm just so happy to be blessed to be in y'all presence. And that's real. And I'm not just saying it to make it sound good, but I, that's real. I love y'all, bro. Man, I appreciate OZ, man. I love you too, bro. Man, <laughs> man, you know as much love, bro. She hearing you say yeah. that is, 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 the, is the biggest, dog. Like I say all the time when people ask me, you know, who's influenced you on you coming up and this, that, and third. It was a lot of different people that I want to hoop like and this, that, and third. But by the time we got the hoops and we started doing our thing, you and man. Finn was the picture of what it was supposed Holy to be like for me. Y'all boys were professional. Y'all was killing it. It's like y'all was all stars, superstars in the league. Y'all was max contract dudes. Y'all was ballers on the court. Y'all had the the Mike Lowry swag with the whips and everything else off the court. But like everything that you heard about y'all, y'all was good people. Y'all always looked out for us as the young boys, and y'all set good examples. I was like, look, boy, like Nuke. No, and Finn, that's it for me. I gotta yeah. be when I become an OG. I want to be viewed like how y'all be viewed. How how we was viewing y'all. Won't tuck my so shirt in. You know that. what I'm saying? Won't tuck my <laughs> shirt in when I hoop. You, you know. Feel me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely love, man. You know we love you and got love Straight for up. you, OG. Man, thank you, bro. Love y'all, man. Uh, so first question we ask everybody is: uh, When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? Wow, <laughs> great question. First person I would say would be Charles Barkley. Mm. Charles oh, Barkley. Chuck. Yeah, man. You know, Chuck, <laughs> man. I remember the time like watching Charles, obviously as a kid growing up and admiring him and uh, loving his game. But then uh, the night before the game, my agent, David Falk and uh, Curtis Pope, they invited me to come out to dinner with them. And uh, they said, you know, Charles is coming. So I'm like, hold up, man. I'm not about to go out here with Charles Barkley. 
uh, and have dinner with him, even though like, you know, he's one of my heroes, a guy that I respect because I don't want to give him that like that advantage of like, you know, maybe something I might make a mistake and say at dinner that make <laughs> me sound like a fan. Then he may start thinking like, you know, that I'm, uh, you know, going to be soft or I'm going to, you know, uh, be fraternizing or befriend him. You know, we, we competitors. And, you know, I, I, you know, I have that old school like type of mentality that I learned from the OGs like, you know, MJ and the other dudes in the hood, you know, in Chicago. So um, he convinced me. <laughs> I went to dinner <laughs> with him. <laughs> and uh, well, as we were at dinner, you know, we talking and chopping it up. And, you know, we had you know, a nice time to get to like, you know, just hear some of his stories, hear some of his advice. And it was very, you know, helpful. So we go out and play the game. I'm thinking he's going to be a little tired because, you know, he probably stayed out a little later than I did because I went home a little early. But Charles came out, man, and, uh, you know, I'm ready to go and I'm, you know, I'm ready to compete. And, you know, I just say what's up to him at the jump ball and then let's go with it. Man, I tell you, he was one of the most craftiest dudes that I ever played against. <laughs> it was like every time he got the ball, if I didn't foul him, I, I got up for a shot fake and he maybe drew a foul. And if he drew a foul, it was an and one. Or uh, if I run it down the floor, he stepped in my way, uh, whether in my path, and he drew an offensive foul and I was on the bench. And um, I just, I was so upset and frustrated because I was thinking back to that night. I'm like, see, I should have never went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, forget, I forget how much he scored that day, but you know, I know it was definitely, uh, his, he got the victory and he got the best of me. But I remember, you know, Charles was that dude, man. I, I grew up in the Illinois history. We got so much history in Illinois, ballers before us. Before you got to high school, who was the person you used to hear about, the baller you used to hear about from Chicago that was like, man, when I get to high school, I want to be on the level of that person? Great question. Marcus Liberty. Marcus Liberty. Liberty. Yeah. Liberty, bro. <laughs> like, you know, everyone talk about Ben Wilson and Benji. Yeah, you know, yeah. Now, Ben Wilson, man, I didn't really get a chance to watch him play other than, like, some tapes that yeah. Tom Kleinschmidt yeah had at his house. So I was at Tom's house because Tom's dad was a referee. So that was the time I got a chance to watch Benzie play. I never watched him in person. But Marcus Liberty, man, with King High School and the mystique of that, of yeah. King and all the talent that came out of there, I watched Lib play in person when I was in grade school. And I was like, wow, man, that dude's so smooth. Like 6'9", can handle the ball like a guard, yeah. can shoot it shoot like a ball. guard. I mean, man. long skilled. pull up. Oh, yeah, long man. You know, <laughs> I just saw. I just saw a picture of him online. It was like a throwback picture with him, Nick Anderson, and Kendall Gill the other day. Like that was that was like a, a sick photo. But that's how I, I saw Liberty on tape. I saw, I saw the, tape the, the, the the tape. Mm -hmm. The finger roll was crazy. Oh, yeah. Finger oh, roll was sick. Yo, the finger roll was like the, the Gerv Iceman finger roll. <laughs> yeah. like, nice. like, it was so smooth and like, you know, fluid. And I'm like, yo, that dude, man, that's the dude, man. I want to grow up and I want to, every award he wins, I want to win that award. Yeah. And he was the one that inspired me, man. Like, he was a player of the year. I want to be the player of the year. Yeah. You know, McDonald's All-American. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be that Downs All-American. Uh, I think they were in the championship of one city. We didn't win city though. I was mad that we didn't win city. <laughs> <laughs> but I won, you know, and pretty much was able to accomplish all the personal goals that Liv accomplished. But he was my inspiration, man. Yeah, I used to watch tapes of Liberty uh, when they played East St. Louis, uh, Lincoln back in the day, Fonzo Ellis now mm -hmm. in uh, downstate. And my coach used to always make me watch like Fonzo Ellis and him all the time. And I remember I used to see him and I remember this specific tape because Marcus Liberty was wearing a house arrest, uh, a house arrest anklet on his ankle. The judge let him play it, go down the state and play at state. So he had his parole officer at the end of the bench. So I'm wow. looking at this, oh, I'm like, man, this is <laughs> classic, <laughs> like That's real crazy. hoop right here. And then, you know, it's King and East St. Louis, two predominantly black schools. Yep. Like this was like, I used to watch that tape so much, you know what I'm saying? To get the game from it, just to feel it, right. you know, feel the moment. But you all have one dude too, man, that, you know, I gotta get love to, uh, it was Alfonso Ellis. Yeah. 
the Fonz O'Ell Please. was that dude, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. You know, and people, uh, you know, didn't get a chance to see like how his career really like how it should have, you yeah. know, like amounted to an NBA. You know, he was solid, you know, great veteran, you know, had a solid, uh, very good, you know, um, NBA career. But before he hurt his knee, yeah, you know, and back then, like, you know, you didn't have that quick recovery time when someone uh, tore the ACL. So it was like right. nine to, you know, no, I'm sorry. It was like a 12 to 16 month recovery. Yeah. But Alfonso was that dog, man. He was strong. He was athletic. He was skilled. Man. Yeah. Him and I Leo, always, him and Eric I always remember the one highlight when he, I think he was playing for Denver when somebody tried to come dunk on him and he literally just, <laughs> he just caught that joint and yeah. cuffed it and then looked. I was like, that's why I say I grew up on the history and, and like that was the guy I chased. That's the guy I respect. And oh, wow. And, and he was the one that chased. He the one made me who it was. The history was embedded in me because he won them state championships three in a row right. back in the day in Illinois. You know, coming from down south Illinois to, win state that's big and ch- chasing him is it motivated me to be who I am. That's what's up, man. That's great. I we played them too, man, when I was a freshman at the University of Michigan. I, actually that was the first time that all freshmen started when we played against Notre Dame at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. And um Lafonso Ellis was on that team, that Notre Dame team. And I think he was a senior. Yeah. And we beat them. Uh but I, I was like, yo, this I'm out here with Fonzo Ellis, man. <laughs> 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 you don't even know that, but I was like, wow, I was like a fan. <laughs> you talking about you wanted to be in the McDonald's All American game and like, you know, that's the best of the best. When you made it and you 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 got there and to see the 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 country's best, how was that for you? Oh, that was a great experience, man. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have like Chris Weber, Jalen Rose. Um, Jimmy King, we all were on the same team for the McDonald's All-American, which is like rare. Yeah, right. Like the four guys that's going to, to the same college playing on the same McDonald's All-American team. They looked out for y'all. It was they meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. So, I think so. And then, you know, we had Big Dog on our team too. So I didn't even start. That's how our team was like, it was loaded. And, uh, you know, I didn't care. I came off the bench. I got work in, <laughs> played very well. But, you know, I've always looked at that game as like, you know, that was a game to say, like, you are pretty much halfway there to making it, you know, because that's was was always considered like when you make it to the McDonald's All-American game, you're on a big stage. And right. People know you and, and know your name. And then, you know, you're considered one of the elite level uh, high school players in the country. How was that coming from from Southside? Is it is Jeffy Manor, right? Uh, no, actually, I I grew up in Loden Homes. Oh, Loden Homes. Yeah, okay. right there on ninety fifth and uh, Princeton. You know, yeah. I two neighborhoods. You know, I claim I can't not go without saying the Jackson Park area was where uh, I spent my from four years old until I was ten years old, uh, where I, I grew up in the Jackson Park off 69th and Harper. And then right. from there, when I was 10, we moved to Loden Homes. And uh, I lived in Loden Homes all the way up until, uh, and that, wow, after my freshman year in college. So you 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 just missed the hundreds. You, just you missed still, y'all. You just y'all. missed it by five blocks. Yeah. You, know, you, you still right there. It's all good. Yeah, but man, like, I got much respect for the wild, wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So, so how how was that though? Like, to, cause I can remember when I when I I can remember the day they announced me for McDonald's, and I was like, that was my goal since I figured out what that was. Like as a uh, freshman in high school, I found out like, man, I'm making a McDonald's game. That's all I want to do. So it was like, I just remember being like, man, dog, like ain't nobody from the hundreds. You know what I'm saying? From right. my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Going to do what I'm about to go do. Like, how was that for you coming from the you know what I'm saying loading homes to the going to the McDonald's game? Man, that was a beautiful moment, man. You know, just looking back to the neighborhood that, you know, grew up in and, you know, seeing, you know, the people that, you know, was, was trying to make it and, you know, had hit some tough roads and um, some of the roadblocks that they went through um, and some of the experiences they had, you know, wasn't the best experience and um, how it can be inspirational for you know, the younger kids that's going to come after me. And, you know, believe it, Lord behold, you know, like Tony Allen, I uh, grew up mm-hmm. in my neighborhood mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah, it's yeah. And I didn't, you know, 
Yeah, he probably didn't make the McDonald's All American game, but he made it in life. Straight up, word up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, Yo, you know, T.A. didn't grew up everywhere, bro. Like he had to be <laughs> like he. At one point, I know he was he was like on the west yeah, side, the west somewhere side. close with with uh with Bynum and them. Like then, because he went to high school at yes. Julian first. He went to Julian with my cousin first. Like wow. people don't know that. Like like he didn't like you know Julian had some good teams. Lance went there, but like right. he he was like a year or two under us. But TA went to Julian first and ended up transferring and going over there to uh, Crane and stuff with uh with Bynum and them. I was like, I didn't know that. I, me neither. Wow. Yeah, the TA man. I, well, everywhere he's gone, he's definitely made a name for himself. That's a fact. <laughs> he have, Straight he up, he's him. a dog. Yeah, I'm proud to see where he at now. He's an ambassador for the Memphis Grizzlies, man. He's 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 looking good out there. Yeah, he one of us, man. You know, and hundred percent. And when he came over to me one time. I seen him out, and uh, the, the the love that he's shown. You know, I've always you know rap shy, and all the all the youngins that. Uh, they either came before me or after me, but particularly the youngins. And T.A. was, you know, being from where we from, and I was like, wow, you know, man, T.A.'s, man, he, you know, world champion, you know, got a ring with, you know, with the Boston Celtics, and I didn't even like Boston, but right. T.A. was on the team, and I was cheering for Straight him, up. you know, I wanted Straight to up. see him get a ring. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Could it could it be anybody else than Michigan? Would it all yeah. know somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, be, be totally honest with you, man. I, I don't know if it would ever been a, a Fab Five if I would have gone to Illinois. Mm -hmm. Because my heart, my dream school was University of Illinois. Yeah. And all the schools that recruited me, um, Illinois was always that school because I've seen so many from our neighborhoods, from our state yeah. that go to University of Illinois and the, the amount of respect that I have for the program and Coach Henson and, um, the, the main guy though, the main recruiter, the main assistant coach, the late Jimmy Collins. Man. Jimmy Collins. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Jimmy yeah. Collins was that dude. Yeah. And uh, if they didn't get into that situation with Iowa where um, allegedly, and I say this allegedly, cause I gotta say out of respect, cause I, I don't know how it ended up at the end, but there was a supposedly a secret tape uh, where there was a, a tape where Deion Thomas, who at the time was being recruited by Illinois and Iowa, and they got into this little NCAA situation where they were saying that Iowa had taped a conversation that Deion Thomas had and, and about his recruitment and about how allegedly Jimmy Collins and the University of Illinois paid him. And, you know, that right there was a big stain on the program, but it also swayed my decision because I was ready to commit early period, which is November. Yeah. And mm -hmm. NCAA had not given back, you know, the uh the penalty or whatever, the sanctions, I would yeah. say. Yeah, the yeah. sanctions. And they they were planning on doing it after November. And I wanted to get my decision over with. So um that was hovering over a big cloud over them. And mm -hmm. I decided to go to Michigan and and that's how the recruitment started with, you know, me recruiting all the others. Uh, and the others I'm speaking of is uh you know, Chris and Jimmy King. And um, I didn't know Ray and uh, J and, J and Jalen, you know, but Ray was, uh, he was that glue dude. Yeah, he, he formed it all together. How did how did you, being from Chicago, how did you play AAU with C. Webb on the Michigan team? Yeah. And then y'all had a cheating ass team. <laughs> y'all had everybody, everybody from what he's saying. Like, how was you like, come on, man. Right, you right. like how they come pluck you out of there. They did you like remember CMH did that with Matt Maggetti when we was coming yeah. through. They came from Kansas City and took Maggetti over there. I'm like, man, how did how did you end up on a Michigan team? Yeah, you know, it's cute. During that time, man. Like somebody in Chicago wasn't doing their job. Like, yeah. where was our AAU <laughs> presence and who wasn't mad or something like, no, you're not taking him, like what? That's the key word just said, our AAU presence. We didn't have a Chicago team. We didn't have a national Chicago team to go over to Jacksonville, Florida to play in the AAU Nationals. Oh. So Steve and Jay Rose, they asked me to come and play with them. And I was like, wow, we, we don't have a team in shop. Well, if it's possible, well, they made it work. And and I don't know exactly how the- Damn right they gonna make it work. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we went in there and we wrecked that league though. We wrecked it. We ran, we won nationals. And uh, we also had Voshan Leonard on the team too. Yeah, he said that, yeah. Like, 
Come on, man. Y'all was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that was our dream team. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the recruitment go? Like, how was it hard to get Webb and, and Jalen? Did they have other schools that they was in for? Was it hard to get them to believe in what you was trying to accomplish in your head of y'all playing together? Yeah, it was hard to get Webb, man. <laughs> Webb was was uh, the guy who I probably recruited the most out of all the guys, man. I was calling Webb like I was an assistant coach on the staff. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the time we were in the runnings with uh, Duke, Michigan State, and Minnesota. But, you know, there were a lot of reports saying that he was going to go to state. You know, I thought he was gonna probably leading to Duke. So I tried to talk him out of it like, bro, <laughs> You know, I'm trying to, you know, and that's rare when you have two guys that play similar position. Yeah. Um, you know, typically what you would see with guys who during that era would want to play against each other, uh, will go separate ways because the other person or one or maybe both guys want to have their own, you know, reputation, they get their own numbers. Um, I was all about winning. Yeah. I wanted to win a championship. I, I wanted to win championships. Yeah. So I wanted to play with Webb. I knew him. I played against him. And I knew that he would be, you know, uh, he would be that, you know, that guy for us, man, that a guy that I know that I will help him be a better player and he will help me because of the unselfishness that we both displayed uh, on the floor. And it, it, it worked. It really did. It worked very well. Um, Jalen, I can't take full credit for that. I would give that to Chris and uh, and also the Michigan staff. You know, I had a little bit of input with Jalen, but uh, I think Chris, uh, you know, he was like the deciding factor for Jay Rose because Jay Rose was, he was heavily leaning towards Syracuse or UNLV. Oh. Hmm. Who get credit for the swag? Because the, the long shorts, <laughs> the, the, the ball heads, the black right. socks, you know what I'm saying? The, the black Nikes. Like who 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 get credit for the swag that y'all had? Cause you know after y'all, it, it was only right. I had every time I had to put my jersey, I had to have black socks and uh, baggy shorts, and you know what I'm saying. So who's who's credit for that? The shorts, I would have to give credit, you know, to um, Jalen, Jalen with the long shorts because you know we had some short shorts in practice, and Jalen used to always pull his down. And pretty much he was showing, you know, his behind. <laughs> Coach, Coach Fish didn't like that. So he he you know, he went in there begging for longer shorts. At times he'll wear like, you know, one of our senior shorts. His name was Chip Armor because his shorts was really big. So I give Jalen a nod on the, sh on the shorts. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the black socks, you know, Ray Jackson all the way. Ray Jackson, when we were our sophomores and we were about to play our first game in Texas versus Rice, and it was a non-conference game, and Ray Jackson, and we chilling in a hotel. He went out to, to the mall and with some of his guys that were from Texas, and they stopped in Foot Locker and bought some Nike socks. So he came back to the hotel like, yo, you know, I check these socks out. Uh, I'm wearing these tomorrow in the game. I'm like, yo, that, 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 that sounds kind of sweet. Black shoes, black socks. <laughs> I'm like, yo, man, huh? here's a couple dollars, man. Go Go grab me a pair. I think Jimmy or somebody was running out to the mall, go back with them because he's going to take them to the store. He was going to get some. I was like, nah, y'all got to get me some. So we ended up getting all five a pair of black socks. But, Jay, but Ray was that dude for the black socks. Ball head, um, that's probably probably Jalen Jalen and Chris. They got credit for the ball head. Um if you notice, I never went with the ball here. Yeah, yeah. That was, you know, I was all total team. You know, I'm team this, team I, I that. I knew you couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, not Mike Lowry, I'm baby. Like, no, line got to be Lowry. Chris now. My line got to be Chris now. I can't do that. I'm like, no, come on now. That's Y'all messing me up now. I got to have the fresh fade. I got to keep the line up. You know, and then on top of that, I'm light-skinned, you know. <laughs> My scalp might my scalp might be green color. Like, <laughs> Gotta get a suntan on my bald. He's like, nah, I ain't ready for this right now. <laughs> that that one right there, y'all not gonna get me on that one. Straight up. I don't care what you say. And, uh, I remember, and I, that was one time I went out. I went against my word, man. Cause my word was always been bond. So you know, I was like, yo, all right, you know what? I'm gonna get a bald head if we. <laughs> make it to the final four our freshman year. If we go to the final four, I'm gonna get a ball here. Oh. 
And I went against my word. I didn't do it, man. I'm like, yo, this we on a big stage, man. I can't. <laughs> I'm really gonna be made fun of. Plus, I got big ears too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So that was that the swag. That's the swag. That's how the swag went down. Right up. <laughs> how was it like that practice? Did y'all start? Did Fisher start off the practice putting y'all five on the team and y'all play against the rest of them, or he mixed y'all up and put you in? Web started or you and Jalen starting. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mix y'all up. Right. When y'all get on the, when did y'all practice all together? Okay, so I'll give you the, start with the second part of the question. The first time we all probably practiced together was leading up to that. Uh, no, it was after the Notre Dame game because um, we did not know that Ray was going to start um, in a Notre Dame game until the day of the game. So then after that, that game, that's when we all five of us first started practicing together. Now, um, in pickup, we all, you know, we'll play together on the same, you know, team. You know, and this was before the season started, like in September. We'll, you know, pick up all five of us versus the upperclassmen. And they didn't want that smoke. I used to yeah, <laughs> they didn't want that. I know they hated that. Five freshmen coming in, summertime ball, ain't no coaches out here. We getting bust up. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, we wanted it every day. But, you know, the first practice that where we had three of us on the same team, it was uh, it was in November. It was me, Webb, and Jalen. And, you know, I had to beat out, you know, Eric Riley for my spot uh, because – you know, my spot wasn't guaranteed as a starter coming in, you know, and I, I it's okay with me, you know, like what we do, we just got to, you know, mano a mano, you know, I'm going to go to practice and I'm going to make sure I'll work whoever I'm playing against. Right. If I got to scratch, you know, push, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, every day I'm bringing. It. So you ain't going to outwork me, whoever you are. And that's what my mentality was every day in practice. And, uh, and at, at times that would be me and Webb going against each other, or there were times when it'd be me and Eric Riley going against one another. I didn't care. Yeah, that's what I was about. And so, um, at the end of the day, all three of us made each other better. And the three I'm speaking of is myself, Webb, and Riley. Yeah, Eric Riley. Yeah, and Eric yeah. Riley was a respectful, you know, as some would say, upperclassman. I call him a vet. You know how he took us all in and was more like our brother, but. There were some guys that was kind of like, you know, bitter about, you know, right. all five of us. I'm going to keep it 100. There was yeah. some guys that was bitter. It's, all, it's yeah. only right. It's only right. You know, a lot of people got a lot invested in this and right. well, they have plans for the future and plans change when you got three freshmen coming in, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and, and ball us like that. What, how was the feeling, the vibe, the momentum, that locker room when he you see them, he writing them names on the on the on the chalkboard, and it's like it's connected. It's like Voltron connected. Like we all together now. So how was that? How was the vibe, the energy, the layup line? You know, what I'm saying like yeah, the right. first time you go out, like go to jump ball. Y'all know y'all about to make yeah, history. How, how about was to be that? the first like five ever. Like, yeah, that, that had to be crazy. Like, y'all looking around at each other like, damn, this really about to happen. Right. The energy was amazing, bro. It was. I mean, you talk about, you know, how excited we was uh, or just to, just to be able to embrace one another on that level because we talked about it for many times in the dorm room. Uh, we've had these talks, you know, eating, you know, pizza, you know, on campus. And and then for Coach to now, you know, trust it, believe it, take a chance on it, and and to see, like, you know, okay, <laughs> you know, this about to be real. Right. And, uh, you know, yeah, there was a little doubt, too, because, you know, you got five underclassmen that's straight out of high school, and uh, how are we going to be taking, you know, if Coach going to allow this experiment – to go one game or two games, or if we lose three and three out of two, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, three out of five, you know, is he gonna change the starting lineup? Right. But man, we were so pumped in practice. You know, it, it was just like the the fluidity, the the chemistry, uh, everything just flowed. And you would think that we played each, with each other for years, but the reason why it worked was because the unselfishness, yeah. the unselfishness yeah. of guys buying into their roles. And wanted to make it work. So I was okay with, you know, if I want, you want me to guard the best big on the opposite team 
or the best forward, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever, let's do it. Yeah. If I got to pass up a, a layup and I see Webb pointing or pointing or giving me the eye contact to throw a lob, I'm throwing a lob because, you know, yeah, I, I like the exciting play, but he may have an easier shot because he's so damn athletic. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right, right. The reason I hate Duke is because of the Fab Five. I don't like Duke because of the Fab Five. The way y'all played the number one team <laughs> in Duke as the five freshmen, how was that game? Man. In in Michigan. I was there. I remember it like like it was yesterday. Like I was okay. heartbroken going to sleep after that night. Right. <laughs> we were so pumped. You talking about, you know, sleep, man. I don't think any of us gotten any sleep the night before the game because we were so excited to hear that the num number one team in the nation is coming to Ann Arbor. And, to, you know, we've heard, the, you know, and the conversations of Christian Leitner being the best player in the country, Bobby Hurley being the best point guard, and um, Coach K, you know, the best college coach in the business. Yeah. And Grant Hill, you know, what he did versus uh, – uh, who was it? Um, UNLV. UNLV. UNLV yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that that team was you know a very skillful, you know, um, iconic team because they always be go go down as beating UNLV in a championship. So we were pumped for it, and I never forget where when we were driving up to the game, and our fans were lined up. I mean, they had been sleeping out for days, camping out like how the Dukies would do. Right. They were looking forward to the moment. And we got on that floor, man. That was a lot of trash talking going on. You know, that was a lot of mean mugging uh, that we probably was mean mugging them more than they was mean mugging us. But we wanted it. We wanted that competition. We wanted all of it. And we wanted to let them know that we wanted it and the excitement in the building. And then when we we didn't finish it, man, we were going back and forth and we and went to overtime and we got the overtime and, you know, they pulled it out and, you know, I, I look back on that game, I'm like, man, that's the one right there. But it definitely put us on a map and uh, everyone in the, you know, in the public, you know, all the national newsletters, uh, all the newspapers, because that was newspapers back then. Right, right. And that's what, you know, they all, you know, marked that as like, you know what, this is the up and coming team. These five freshmen are for real. Yeah. How, how was it for you coming from, you know, CVS, South Side of Chicago, going to big Michigan? Like when you get to Ann Arbor and it's this, you know, it's this huge campus. Was it, how was it for y'all being, you know, both of y'all was inner city kids going to this huge, predominantly white campus. How was that type of like as far as a culture shock for y'all? Yeah, it was a culture shock for me. I can speak for me because, you know, I'm from, you know, like where you guys are from. Uh, inner city, you know, being from the south side, you know, my, my my elementary school, which we call grammar school, you know, that that was all black. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, my high school, CVS, was all black. Yeah. My neighborhood, you know, I grew up, both of them was all black. So now I go to, you know, the University of Michigan and this prestigious university, like you mentioned, a highly academic school. Um, how would I, you know, navigate through, you know, this, uh, this environment without having like my grandmother or, you know, uh, someone to help me through the process or my high school coach who was looked at as my father figure coach, Richard Cook, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Donnie Kirksey, who was also looked at as, as an uncle slash father figure, they weren't going to be around. So it's just going to be me now. And what helped was I was fortunate enough to have a coaching staff like, you know, Brian Dutcher, um, Jay Smith, Perry Watson, and then Scott Perry came on a little bit later when Perry Watson took the head job at UAD. But those guys really helped me uh, get through the college level and helped me with my college experience on teaching me uh, on what it would take, you know, uh, to, to be able to excel in a classroom. Because the first time I saw one of our lecture halls, it was like 150 students in there. <laughs> And I'm like, damn. That's crazy. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that's crazy. Now, now, how I'm going to interact with the professor? Like, how I'm, I'm going to learn face the in the crowd. You should right. be facing the crowd. Damn. You don't know if you turned in your homework or not. <laughs> yeah, I tell you one thing. My first 
communication uh, project, I bombed that <laughs> because I didn't even understand, like, you know, exactly <laughs> what was asked, uh, uh, of what the lesson was. And, and I, I had to pre- do the presentation and I thought I was prepared, but, you know, at the end of results, I was not. So that was the first time that was where I was like, you know what? It hit me. Like, I got to lock in. And uh, I, I met with our academic advisor came up with a game plan, taught me about time management, uh, you know, a little stuff out there practice I can't get indulge in. You know, I got to lock Man. in now, yeah. you know, uh, hanging out with, you know, a couple of chicks on the weekend, whatever, that's not going to fly. Yeah. You know, I got to, you know, if I want to be out there on the floor and be uh, eligible, if I want to excel and be able to get my degree, you know, I got to put some of these other things aside and, and there's yeah. a time and place for that, but I got to lock in on my academics and, I started to focus, man, and I didn't want to fail. And I was not going to fail because I didn't want to look back. I go back home in, all, in the summertime and the kids and, and the people that depended on me um, and support me, you know, I, I can't look bad in front of them. And I got to, you know, do it for the shorties, you know, and be an example for the youngest that's coming behind me. Yeah. But it, it was a culture shock, fellas. It was intimidating. <laughs> At what point did it get to the point where y'all looking at each other like, yo, like we out here, like we really a problem and like we really good, like we really could could win something. At what point did it start to turn like that for y'all amongst the Fab Five? I know, man, for me, and you know, I think I can speak for all of us when I say this, Notre Dame game. You know, I go back to that game when we were on the road and all five of us started for the first time and we playing in Notre Dame on national TV. And at that time, it was Notre Dame games were shown on NBC. Right. And so we won that game, and we all scored all the points. Like, we didn't get no bench production. And I was yeah. like, wow, you know what? Yo, I, I think we got something here, bro. We, you know, we're going to be all right. And uh, we, we went back to the Big Ten season. Because that was in the mid midpoint of the season when we played Notre Dame. Right. Yeah. But we took off from there, bro. We took off. Um, and Jalen was our Magic Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> he was our point guard. Yeah. Yeah. I Jalen used to talk so much shit. Like, see, like every game, Jalen used to talk so much shit. Like, how was that to just some of the stuff that Jalen used to just be out there doing? Like, <laughs> it's like he used to start something. Even if y'all came in, y'all didn't, y'all was like, man, we just gonna play the game. Jalen, get it hype. Well, you, now y'all into it. Like, how, how was them game where y'all just out there playing and then Jalen just started some shit and now it's on? <laughs> Jerry Rose is the different Jay Rose today. The, the, the <laughs> you, hey, listen, I, listen, I was a teammate with him. I swear, I be sitting there listening. I say, man, listen, you ain't gonna tell me people can't grow and grow and mature and like, like, bro. Cause look, hey, Jay Rose is one of the sickest teammates ever, dog. <laughs> hey, Q, Q, I know what you're talking about. I'm like, yo. Man, this dude, man, they talk about changing. I'm like, people can change. <laughs> like, my man, like you said, he talked trash to everyone. <laughs> and I'm speaking of every player on the floor. He's also talking trash. You know, like if a coach, don't let a coach say something. Or assistant coach, oh, it's over. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and then a referee, like one time we were playing at Notre Dame. And Jalen was talking to one of the players and then the fans was going at it too, you know? So that just really getting them going. And the referee, we sitting on the free throw line and ref, he's smiling. Cause you know, his smile is like talking trash, right? That's the thing. <laughs> so, so like he's smiling and ref is like, yo, Jalen stop smiling. And first of all, how you gonna tell anyone to stop smiling? <laughs> so then Jalen, don't tell him to stop doing something cause he gonna keep <laughs> gonna do it anyway. <laughs> right. So he's still smiling. The ref give him a tech. And like, it's like, I'm not making this up. And I'm, it's a true story. So that right there was like, that let me know that these, not these, but all, some of these folks are against us. They don't want to see this succeed. Yeah. They don't want to see us do well. But then Jay Rose, like, he didn't help the cause because <laughs> every time we play against anyone, like he's going at you and he's going to let you hear it. Okay, like, like Bobby Hurley. Oh man, 
I mean, he's he's really letting him have it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, Jim Jackson. Like, he was that dude in college. Yeah. Man. Straight Jim up. Jackson. Yeah, Jim oh, Jackson geez. was that dude. You know, but Jalen, hey, he ain't mind no letting let him have some of it too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the thing about Jay. The thing that made him a, a a a unique and great trash talker because he combined like he was he was he was witty. He was smart, witty, and funny. But like he definitely had that I'm an asshole in me. And then he was hood. Yeah. He was hood. I ain't like I'm from the hood. I yeah. ain't scared. He's like, what's up? So it's like when you get all of that, he like I I that prime perfect story about J Rose, bro. We play with the Knicks, right? We play with the Knicks. So this is a perfect story. J Rose would be coming in and like this when they put uh Zeke put the suit. We had the whole suit rule, right? You got uh-huh. with a full fledged suit, head to toe, whenever we come. So J. Rose was like, man, they just like, you know how he is. Like he he, he like the establishment, like, how they just gonna tell us how we gotta dress and all this, right? <laughs> so one day we get to the plane, no lie, no lie, one. This man came in with a full suit on, right? But the joint was blue jean, it was denim. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, like this is this is J Rose beating the system. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come in, like trying to tell us all that. I'm like, I say, yo, my man got on the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and look, <laughs> it was, and like he was playing though. He like, yo, he comfortable because you know, you know us, we don't want no damn suit on the plane and all that. But I was right. like, yo, J Rose is really sick. <laughs> he a sick dude at one point. Uh, Coach Brown had told a lot of older dudes, like it was like Jerome James, Kelvin Cato, Mo Taylor, Steph, uh, Bob Brown. He had, yeah, y'all don't gotta, you know, it was like toward the end of the season, like y'all just, you know what I'm saying, y'all ain't really gotta come in. I just wanna work, he wants to work with the young guys and develop them. <laughs> we be down on one end of the court, Juwan Price. Yeah, the door swing open. <laughs> it's Jalen. He coming in every day on there. You're not about to tell me that I ain't show up to work. <laughs> J Ro would show up every day. Be dribbling the ball on the other end, like, can I get a rebounder? <laughs> oh no, it's cool. Like, <laughs> like, you know this is way, like, like he look down. <laughs> I'll be like, <laughs> My man J. Rose was sick. Yeah. And the key word you said was witty, man. He's so smart, yo. And yo. I'm showing up every day. You're not about to say that he wasn't showing up. Like, <laughs> yup, yup. Hey, hey, that dude's finesse. Hey, he gonna definitely let you know that he's oh. there. He's gonna be hurt and he ain't biting his tongue to nobody, yo. Yeah, I love J. Rose. I love him. I love him too. <laughs> This is like, you know, 25 years later or so. And even though y'all didn't win a national championship, how does it feel to see the impact of, you know, like players like me that came up behind y'all and all these players, that, like the, how y'all moved the culture and how y'all moved, you know what I'm saying, so many different hoods, so many different players and to see them speak up on what y'all did and the impact y'all had. Like, how does that feel to see it now and, you know, I know a lot of people were saying that y'all did the documentary, you know what I'm saying? And I know you you getting more of the appreciation that you probably didn't feel it back then, you know? How is that now that to receive that appreciation of like how y'all really motivated and put stars through the league that follows y'all from the KGs to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that, man, that, that's, that's a, you know what? It's an emotional moment when you say that now, like, how we've been appreciated and accepted by many, uh, many folks who now have an opportunity that you walk across and you meet, whether it's on a, you know, sports level or you know, uh, or prof- you know, on a corporate level, or uh, you walking through the airport, um, you always be remembered as, hey, that's you know, Juwan from the Fab Five, you know, yeah, uh, you remember his iconic team, like you know, a, a dad or a mom telling their child, the story, and the kid looking around like, who is that? But then now, <laughs> now with the documentary, uh, you know, which was uh, a few years ago, now a lot of the kids are like, oh yeah, I remember on you know, 30 for 30. Yeah. You know, and they, they hear the story and it's been inspiring to them. But at the time, man, like media, um, they weren't friendly at all. Yeah. They, they were not accepting of us. And, a lot of our people here in the state of Michigan, 
uh, was writing bad letters and, you know, very racist letters to our head coach and staff because they didn't accept it. Yeah. I'm seeing five black young men on the court being able to be expressive mm -hmm. uh, and having fun while doing it yeah. uh, and not caring, you know, or having to care about what somebody think or say. And this is the way that we feel that works. And we're going to also let you know that we're going to kick your ass out there on the floor too. Yeah. Straight up, straight yeah. up. And that right there was beautiful, man. I look back on it like, here, here you go. Like you talk about name, image, likeness now. Okay, all five of us, including our other teammates would have been able to capitalize off the brand. Yeah. Um, Hugely. Yes, yes. And then you speak on you know, like the media, the social media, uh, social media, yeah, like Fab Five, we've been able to express like a lot of things that's happening with the country, with social injustice and, you know, and and things of that nature, you know, uh, police reform, and, you know, we'll be able to express ourselves uh, and using our platform. Uh, but I look back on it with the, you know, what we've done, it's been inspirational to many uh, and not just, you know, uh, young blacks that are coming out of the inner city, but many others across the world. Cause I, you know, there are a lot of people from different races have always been complimentary of what we've done in, on the collegiate level and not being able to win. That's the part too that yeah. gets me. Like, man, we lost two years in a row and, I'm, and I hate losing. Yeah. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I came back to the college game too. Not only to coach my alma mater and to be here to impact young men, to help them grow, to become a man when I hand them back to their parents. But yeah, I'm competitive too. You know, I want to win that title, man, that I tried to do as I was a student athlete here at the University of Michigan. Yeah, y'all put y'all in the category as AI. Uh, me and Q say this all the time that AI like sacrificed itself for us to be us ourselves in the NBA. I feel like y'all sacrificed, y'all went through all that from the bad articles, all that to, oh, they wearing long shorts and they wearing black socks. Y'all sacrificed, in fact, if I sacrificed that for guys to go to college and be themselves, you know what I'm saying? After that, so I definitely put y'all in the category of, of that, of the impact that y'all had. Thank you, brother. How was it when you got to walk across that stage and shake David Stern's hand? Wow. Being like, this, this is the, you know, this is the one moment, like you say, we didn't all watch, like, growing up the draft, and when you get your hat and all that, like, how, how was that moment for you to, to, when you walk across that stage after hearing your name draft and you shake hands with Dr. David Stern? Man, that was a highlight moment, man. It was, uh, it was like, you know what? We made it. <laughs> we made it out the hood. <laughs> Hey, listen, mama, we made mama, it. Mama, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> we here we now. We here, brother. We here. Like, that was a highlight moment of, you know, the opportunity of now our life has changed. And all those years of, you know, eating them hot sauce sandwiches. <laughs> when we didn't yeah, have that government, that government, government cheese. cheese, government butter, yeah, <laughs> peanut butter. Oh, come on, bro. Let's <laughs> hey, we could, and I didn't mess with the uh, the, the powder milk now, yeah. you know, I didn't like the powder milk, but that government cheese where you don't cut off on you know, you're trying to cut it, it just doesn't flow the right way, yeah. <laughs> middle, and then you got to cut another piece, yeah, bro. Now I finally made it. <laughs> we can now have. Some Velveeta cheese. <laughs> Steak and potatoes and stuff. Yo, my <laughs> man, hook it up. Yes. Give us two pieces of cheese. <laughs> I always wanted to ask you, you know, you, you play with Weber in Michigan, and now you get to play with Weber with the bullets. Like, how is that? Like, how is that combination? No, could, of you like, could you believe I that? Could, could you I know believe you could, that? like how oh, me, we couldn't believe. It happened, I couldn't we believe We could it. believe we played together and then like seeing y'all play together, it's like, man, like we was like, man, we got one and web on it, like in the league? Like, how was that? Uh, <laughs> that was wild, man. I tell you, that was, the, that was the best moment ever for me. Like my first, cause like my rookie year, I was still the holdout and I, I had missed summer league. I missed our training camp, and then I missed our seven regular season games, still trying to like um, negotiate my contract, my rookie deal. And I was a holdout. And so then my first day I signed my contract, 
was the day that they had traded Tom Gugliotta and traded him to Golden State Warriors for Chris Webber. I'm like, yo, now <laughs> we're about to play the first game, the first day that I'm signing, and we're both joining the Washington Wizards. I'm sorry, That's at that crazy. time, the Bullets. Bullets. Yeah, the Bullets. We're going to play our first game together, the first regular season for myself. I'm like, yo, man, this is – you can't script it even better because That's crazy. the relationship, the – you know the the the, um, the relationship we have on the court and off the court, it like it speaks volumes. It's like that's my family, so mm-hmm. you know that was a blessing, man. And uh, I look back on that. I hate it, bro, when he got traded from the Wizards, man, to San Ant- Sacramento Kings, man. I'm like, whoa, really? <laughs> like, that's what we're doing now. Like here we are, <laughs> young, young guns, man. Yeah. We about to yeah, this thing out. next generation. <laughs> And, you know, we go through the playoffs together and um, we're still a young team. We got, you know, Rod Strickland, one of the best premier point guards in in the NBA and, you know, George Mirasan. And then, and one time we had Rasheed Wallace. Jeez, I know I'm wow, just, I remember that. We, <laughs> yeah, we had Rasheed Wallace. I had and Ben. Ben was there too, right? Ben, ben too. Bro, we had Ben. And they traded Ben for uh, Ike Austin. Uh, ben was a rookie, man. He, I tell you, he came in the games. He'll play limited minutes. He would have like about seven rebounds and two blocks. <laughs> with only like eight minutes of play. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Like, Ben, like, was, I was when we traded him, no offense to Ike, but I was like, man, bro, we, I, I hate that. We're going to, we missing out on a young dude that, has a promising uh, way of how he affects the game, affects the game and winning. Yeah, and yeah. he's so impactful, but we see what happened after that. Yeah. Oh, that's how y'all had Calvert Chaney too, right? Calvert Chaney. Like cool how is to play the Calvert Chaney? And, and I, I used to love watching y'all on weekends play against Indiana. And now Calvert Chaney is on y'all. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you. Calvin used to give us the business. Used to give you work. I hated Calvin Chaney. <laughs> Chaney used to always have a good game against me. <laughs> <laughs> used to give us, man. I'm telling you, the business, man. We could not be cool, Cal. Yeah. Indiana, man. Cal was like that. And now we have, we playing with him. And that's one thing that if anyone in the locker room, that we in the NBA locker room, that we are now teammates of, that, yeah, we could not talk trash to Kyle because Kyle would win every trash talk. <laughs> Never won. <laughs> say that. <Right. laughs> so they don't say nothing to him. I don't mess with Kyle. <laughs> People be asking me about my rookie year, and they was like, man, how was your rookie year? And I was like, man, it was so easy because I had Q, Keon, Corey, had my guys with me. Did Weber make your rookie year like a, a breeze, a, a, like a breath of fresh air for having your guy with you and, and just going through your rookie year, being your first year in the NBA? Yes, he did, bro. Um, my transition as a, as a rookie was easy with Webb being there because Webb had just experienced it in Golden State and you know we all know what he did his rookie year uh, mm-hmm. on the floor, um, rookie of the year, and then you know, to help me navigate through the NBA on, you know, what to, you know, how to develop a pregame routine, um, what it's like being on the road, um, eating on the road with him, you know, having a friend, a brother that I can rely on and talk to, uh, someone, of course, that can pat me on the back, you know, when things get a little rough, uh, being that sounding board. Um, I was very fortunate, man. And I look back on that, man. I don't know if I didn't have Webb, how I would have made my transition. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a little, a little bit tougher. Yeah. Tell me this, though. Like, you went from holding out, you know what I'm saying, rookie year, then you get you get signed, then you make all rookie team, to then the next year you the first $100 million man. How they do that? Like, like I know the people listening, South like, wait, how, how you go from that? a rookie? <laughs> like, you one of the people that broke the scale. You you made the scale come into existence. You and Big Dog, y'all made the y'all made the whole rookie scale come into existence, right? Well, Big Dog made the rookie scale come into existence. But when I got my deal, and then KG got his deal, and then you know uh, Alonzo Morning got his. Yeah, it was you then Alonzo. Right. So then the uh, CBA, they wanted to change the CBA up because they felt that a lot of teams now wouldn't be able to sign a lot of these, 
these top top players, star players on different teams, these big deals that, you know, with the small markets, uh, with the TV deal, mm. uh, it just was not, you know, feasible. So look, looking back on it, um, we had, we didn't, we ended up having a lockout, I believe like a year later, yeah, uh, yeah. Because of the CBA, uh, because they was trying to crack down on the hundred, hundred million dollar deals. Exactly. But after my second year, man, like, like first I had to prove myself my first two years. Yeah, you um, made all-star second year. Yes. And, and my contract and my rookie deal, which I had signed late because of our owner, uh, and, uh, the salary cap that was available, uh, was just totally unfair as far as, you know, what they did as far as not slotting me in my slot. So they gave me a two year out to prove myself. So I proved myself, uh, right. and the fair market value at that time was, uh, you know, they could have saved a lot of money. They would took care of me on the rookie deal. But mm -hmm. then um, after that year, uh, that summer, you know, and David Falk being my agent, I never forget he came into my house and was like, man, we're going we, we're gonna to ask for a hundred million. I said, huh? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, don't do me like that. Like, no, I, I'm cool. Like, it's like, no, that's what the market, we're going we're gonna to test the market. I was like, so how was that phone call when you got the word like, yeah, we going we got you to hunt, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> twelve oh one. I had met in free agency. I first meeting I had was, man, I think it was with Miami Heat, and then the New York Knicks uh, came in at like two in the morning. Um, Detroit Pistons came in, uh, met like about three in the morning, and I'm in my agent office, but Alonzo there. Cause he represented by David Falk too. And, you know, the next day, Washington came in at like 84. And, you know, here I have Miami at 100 and, you know, 100.2, I remembered it like it was yesterday. And I got Alonzo Mourning, one of the best centers and Pat Riley, the head coach, Tim Hardaway, Tim, Tim Hardaway, Hardaway point guard. And I'm like, wow, you know, we, we, we talking about getting PJ, uh, PJ uh, Brown, Brown, PJ Brown. I'm like, yo, yo, we gonna have a hell of a team, man. And you got Voshan Leonard there Sean too. Leonard, yeah. we're, gonna be, we're gonna be all right. So my uh, Washington, my heart was with Washington, but Washington still was did not want to, you know, take it up to that market level. Well, I'm like, yo, you know, <laughs> let's be real about it. You know, you got 100, then you got, you know, people don't know this, but Detroit. And New York was offering 112. And I chose Miami Heat and Miami and Jeff Wexler. You know Jeff, your agent. Uh, Jeff was there as well. He knows the whole entire story. He know how it all went down. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going with this young center right here. You know, and I hated leaving Webb. I did not want to leave Webb. I was in tears, man, because I wanted, you know, to play with Washington. I was like, you know what? If business is business. That's how they're going to treat it. Well, I'm going to Miami. And right. Miami, uh, man, wow. <laughs> you know, NBA disallowed that contract. They were like, no, nah, we got to avoid this. And that that's when Washington <laughs> stepped up. Like, yo, we got a chance to get them for the second time. Well, let's go ahead and sign them for 105. But the owner was not happy with that at all whatsoever. You know, I, I really credit the late wait, um, Wes Unsell. Wes Unsell. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was the one that really uh, spoke on my behalf. The bag, you got the 105. So, you know, I like to ask the question, you know, we all from humble beginnings, you from- you know, Go ahead, answer. Projects, you feel me? Action. What, 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 did, what did my OG, AKA Mike Lowry do when he got that 105? What, what did you do? I don't wanna Great hear question. about- I no house for somebody and take it. I'm talking about what did you do for yourself where you was like, oh no, I'm about to freak this, I'm about to do this or whatever. What did you do? I know, was it one of the Rarries or one of the rare Rarries <laughs> that I seen you pulling up the hoops? Well, what? Cause I, you know, I'm telling you, for y'all that don't know, 
<laughs> Jawan Howard and Mike Finley was Mike Lowry. We used to call <laughs> these boys bad. It, neither one of them was Marcus. Y'all both was Mike Lowry. Y'all was bad boys, but they both was Mike because y'all was fly. Like we, like you said, we get the hoops. It's nine o'clock. Y'all already icing up reading y'all newspaper, finishing up. We like, look at OG now. Let's go see. Hold up, hold up. Wait, wait. We got to go see what car they drove today. Because you was, was coming in something crazy every time. I know who that is. So we hit the park lot. I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> So, so look, so look, tell us, we got to know, what did you do when you got that 105? And then it's the first of its kind. Like, this is a rarity because this ain't never happened before when you did. You the first one to do it. You walk around like, it's a, you got like, you know, it's a humble brag. Like, yeah, ain't nobody did this yet. Like, right, right. <laughs> like, and, and mind you, Michael Jordan was still in the NBA at this point and he hadn't did it. So that was like mind blowing to us all. Man, my first purchase was a Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari. Ferrari, boys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I went and got them horses, man. I went and got 12 of them. <laughs> that four, that 457, not 12 Ferraris, but uh, yeah. you know, the 456 GT was a, a, a V12, V12, 12 yeah. horsepower. You know, I was like, yo, bro, I got to get that, man. And that. That was that was the first car that I learned how to drive a stick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had never you know known how to drive stick. a stick. Man, we from the hood, man. We're my not, my mama say, told bro, me I can't drive. A, car ain't know what to my do. mama told <laughs> me I can't drive a car until I learn how to drive a stick. So she made me really? learn how to drive a stick first before I could drive an automatic. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. She wow. said you could we drive a stick. A you could drive anything. My family to have a car. We were taking the bus, bro. We were taking the <laughs> bus and the L. To you know, to go to grocery stores, to go hoop, go to baseball games, go to school. Well, I got that car, and uh, Tim Grover and his girlfriend at the time, uh, Catherine, taught me how to drive a stick. Because uh, Tim Grover had a Mitsubishi yeah. 3000 GT. Yeah. So I used to go to the parking lot right off of uh, Lakeshore Drive. I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> Off Lakeshore Drive, we'll go to one of them empty parking lots and they'll teach me how to drive a stick before I got my Ferrari. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah. How to, how about trying to learn how to drive a Ferrari and and it's a stick? Like, yo, I'm so happy I didn't blow out the engine. <laughs> or the... <laughs> What's the secret into keeping the best line and in the game, the freshest haircut in the game, every game? of your career. What's the secret into that? Cause like, it's like, it's not, you know, all of us have our bad hair days here and there, you know what I'm saying? But Man. every time I see you on TV, every time I see you, it was like, you just left the barbershop. <laughs> hey man, don't listen, to C-Web. don't listen to Don't listen to C-Web. C-Web used to tell people, man, I had a haircut every three days. That's not true. <laughs> but tell you the secret. I get a haircut every week, all right, now, a lot of people don't know this, but people in the back at the crib knows that I was the barber in our neighborhood. So that was my hustle. Uh-huh. So I used uh-huh. to be the neighborhood barber. You know, I, that's how I used to make some bread. There you have it. So he touched himself up to touch and keep it clean. Up. Exactly. Oh, so you in the hotel room keeping this truck right for the game. That was your he, so, thing, really, huh? so really, oh, okay. so really, so really, so what he's saying is that he got he got haircuts daily. And I got skills. He got the real one haircut, then he just kept it, he, he kept it, he kept it tied up the whole time. That used to be crisp. Yeah, I'll come out, you know, like it, it was like three days later, like you know, some of the line and it started to go down a little bit. So you know, get out the shower, you know, after you done wash your hair and, you know, put your conditioner in, you know. And I never went with a wave cap, you know, I'll just brush it, you know, a few times and then it'll lay down and then I'll just tap it up, you know, with the lining and then I'll do my goatee and that's how it always stay crisp. How was it to play with Finn, play with Dirk Nowinski, play with that Mav squad? When uh they was fighting in, in, in the West for spots and fighting to, to go to the championship in the dirty West, because you know how hard the West was. I remember when we used to play y'all, Sean Bradley, like uh yep. Adrian Griffin. Y'all used to have like, man, all y'all was like the stars. Like I'm talking about y'all had a lot of star power on y'all squad. But a young Dirk Nowinski and you know how he's involved and you know, your guy Finn that you see every summer. <laughs> like all the time, right. like how was that? Bro, that was the best, one of the best teams that I ever played on. And with that team, man, like you touched on, like we were young too. Like yeah. we wasn't we wasn't like eight year vets. Nah. I mean, 
we were like six years in or yeah. five years in. And, you know, I think Dirk may have been in like four years in or something like that. And we had Steve Nash. And, you know, I just thought that that was a team of the future. Yeah. And, um, you know, John Nelson and, you know, Mark, after we had lost our in the second round in the playoffs versus the San Antonio Spurs. And then the next season, uh, we were like the number one team in the West. So it comes trade deadline in February. And at that time, you know, I remember before the trade deadline, my name was being mentioned as being traded for Carl Malone going to Utah and Carl coming to Dallas. But I'm like, no, nah, they can never let that happen. You know, yeah, Carl right. is Carl. Like, yeah, you know, he's yeah. Mr. Utah. And I never forget, like, Mark came to me one time when I was in the training room uh, getting taped. He was like, man, don't listen to those rumors. We're not trading you. And I was like, yo, I'm not even worried about it anyway. So, uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I just want to win. And I want to win here. But then the trade deadline comes. And I'm, we have a game that day, and I'm going through my pregame routine. I always take a nap. And so when I woke up from my nap, um, I get a phone call from my agent. He said, yo, you've you been traded to the Denver Nuggets. I said, huh? <laughs> Denver Nuggets? There? And I, I'm like, yo, Denver Nuggets is – he told me who I was traded for. I was traded for Nick Van Axel, Rafe LaFrance, Avery Johnson, Tariq Abdul-Wahad. And uh, I think Popeye Jones was in that trade, too. And then it was me, Tim Hardaway, and Donnell Harvey. We're going to Denver. E Harvey. No, that killed me, bro. Yeah. I was – that was one time I was really sick. I was like, yo, man, I can't believe we're going from the Dallas one to team Denver. to the West to now to Denver, which is the last place team. Um and I look back on that, man. If I ever see Don Nelson to this day, man, I'm gonna let him hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we used to play out and like we see some of the high. We got a bunch of highlights, but I just remember y'all used to kick our ass. We used to try our best to beat y'all. <laughs> but like y'all used to just get over the hump on us on some veteran stuff because we didn't know how to win when we was like mm -hmm. clipper. We didn't know how to like end the games. And y'all used to just go to work. <laughs> but D, D y'all, hey. Y'all weren't the only team that got it, man. Keep in mind, I said we were the number one in the West, yeah. bro. Like this man traded First to that. last. Yes. First to last. That's a, I, I had that feeling. Like when I was in Phoenix and got shipped from number one in the NBA to the to the seller when I got sent to the Knicks. We got the literally the worst record in the league. I went from the best record literally to the worst record. That in the hurts. And the snap of a finger. <laughs> That's I feel you. I remember when you was in Phoenix, man. I was loving that too, bro. Like y'all changed the game. Like, Snap of a finger. Oh my God. You you had like Steve and uh Marsh the stat. You also had uh tricks. Tricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe man. It's like Joe, Joe Johnson. Johnson. I was like, oh man, these boys, they doing it, boy. <laughs> and my boy Shot was killing it. When you first made your first all-star, you made it your second year, and it, it's hit us. Oh, it, on that sick. E squad, it was hit us. Like seeing that picture of all y'all on there, how was that? To see, look across the, look in the locker room, and you see the guys you was just looking at TV two years ago watching. Yeah, that was amazing, bro. It was like MJ, you know, Patrick Ewing, um, just seeing Penny, like, do work. Penny, then Shaq. Um, I was like, wow, like, damn, this real? I'm here? Right, right. And, and then I looked over at the other, we warming up and I go, and I see the dream, David Robinson, uh, the glove. I'm like, oh, wow, this is real. So that was a highlight moment, man. I was, I was, I tried to keep my cool, but yeah, I was a little nervous. How, how was it to play? Like, I feel like, as far as like, I don't know, you want to say talent or skill, this is one of the most skilled offensive players we've seen, like in T-Mac. How was it to 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 be that close to see what he was doing? He was, I know he led the league in scoring a couple times while he was his teammate. Like just watching how nice he really was and you seeing that every day. Cause you know how it is when we see somebody in practice, we get to see a little, a different glimpse of what be going on and how a hey, greatness, like how was it playing with him and seeing how, how just good he was? <laughs> Man, it was beautiful to see the greatness that Mac was able to display in person. Um, 
his skill level to be at that size, uh, six eight, crazy, and it was a guard, you know. And then his passing ability uh, to be able to see the floor and pass that thing on time, on target with his left hand. Not, you know, I'm not saying his strong hand. I'm talking about his left hand, on time, on target, hook passes, um, and then his scoring ability. Um, you know, he can you know, score with the best of them. Best you talk of them. about the one time. I was a part of that game where he scored like what sixty three points or something like that. It was, it was something crazy, but he did it so effortless. <laughs> That's the thing. Like that was the problem. Yeah. It was like I'm half sleep out here, but right. I'm about to put fifty on y'all. Like he was under the rule. I knew when I played him, I was going, I was going, I was going straight Chicago. Mm -hmm. it, this was this was about to be Red West basketball. I'm about to foul the hell out you, boy. I'm about to foul you. <laughs> like you're not about to just act the fool out here on me. Like you, he could go, he got the ability to go too crazy. So the whole game, I'm on edge. I'm ready to fight. I'm acting like some shit going down. Right. Like you just seem edgy, edgy. Yeah. I'm laughing. Come on. I'm laughing at this dude, man. <laughs> but but I, I'm laughing because I'm like not making fun. I'm like laughing because I already know how you wired. And uh and other dudes don't understand it. So I'm like, that's that competitive dog in him, boy, from the shot. Yeah. And and then, we're, like, one thing that we have to, you know, mention that I think people don't talk a lot about is that T-Mac was, and they said a lot about LeBron, about how LeBron was high Q, and, you know, but T-Mac had high Q. High IQ. Crazy IQ. Man, man. Like, yeah, I feel bro. like he don't get enough credit. Every time I used to oh, see him, don't. every time I used to see him, he had thirty in his pocket waiting on me. Nah, he <laughs> you know was a bona fide. Every time I <laughs> he was a bona fide. I'm telling you, like going to the game, it's like, all right, I already know. Like, yeah. right, I'm foul. I'm I'm knowing I'm about to either foul out or get five, <laughs> and I'm about to be demonstrative and all of this because I got to try and do something to offset all of this goddamn ability. <laughs> yeah, I got to try and get some type of edge or somewhere because. He ain't bullshitting like hell. He had a full clip. All you could thought the hezzy jumper was so it was out of here. That hezzy jumper that he had was oh, yeah. that shit was out and of here. And then when he get there, he taking off. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> when he get there, he take it off like he fly. <laughs> Super he, athlete. He, he he was one of the ones that surprised me because like you know when we first got to league, that was like his first year in in Orlando, and you know. I, Toronto didn't let him show his talent the way Orlando, he took off with Orlando. Mm -hmm. We got to the league, that boy instantly went to top three, scoring, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And it was, was like, this guarantee he killing. <laughs> bro, I was, I was in attendance at the legendary Adidas camp where he went from out of nowhere to number one. I was there. Like you, you had ABCD camp at Princeton. New, you remember how them courts was like in yeah. rows across, like, bro, you could be, way down on like court three or something, and you can see him on the other end, and you will just see that number 175 raise up and do something crazy. I was like this, and like Keon, I remember Keon saying something about like in the beginning, Keon doing it, cause he played on Florida Flash with Keon. He like, man, we got this dude, Tracy McGrady, dog. He cold, dog. They don't nobody know about him, dog. He ain't never played at you or nothing and all this. Man, that man went from unranked to number one. <laughs> <laughs> how do two good guys get into it? How, how, like Al Hearns is one of my favorite people and you are my OG, you one of my favorite. How do that even be possible? How, did, how you know about that? <laughs> how, how, how is that even possible <laughs> that two of the most great guys ever <laughs> like get into it? It was like, that was awkward for everybody. How was that? Yeah. Al brought that up when we yeah. had him on, huh? <laughs> yeah, That's we asked that, did. like, how did y'all get it? <laughs> Man, I, it was like this. Al was playing for the, the Pacers. Pacers. And um, the head coach was Isaiah Thomas. And you know how Isaiah tried to get all these boys wired to try to play like the bad boys. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody ain't built like Lambeer and, and, and how he was and Mahorn and all those guys, man. So he had them boys juiced up. They come to Denver and they had Jay uh, on their team. And, you know, it's a competitive game. So – Al was underneath the basket about to try to get offensive rebound. And I, I sort of like, you know, put the hook and with my elbow to box him out. Or, or maybe it was vice versa. Maybe I was going for the offensive rebound. But here's what Al did. When I put the elbow in across his chest, my man flipped me back. 
<laughs> bro, like like a like a body slam, like so hip toss, yeah. Try the hip yeah, toss. Man, like, hold up, no, <laughs> that's not basketball oh, here. Man. So I get up, I like popped him, like you know, <laughs> you, know I, you know, and then and then uh, I think it like shocked him, and so they break us up, like so. Then after that, as they we separated. Jermaine O'Neal comes by, try to do a little slick move, <laughs> like a little hip check, like like he, because he was all the way down on the other end of the floor, and he running back, and you know, come on, man, you know, we we know when somebody's doing something, try what they think, <laughs> kind of, you know, slick. So then I I pushed him up off me, but I swung at him and I missed on him. <laughs> so, so that's how that thing broke out. So we now. Jermaine trying to act like he gonna go to the back and try to meet me on the other side. I'm like, no problem, you know. <laughs> let's get it, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> and uh, you know, no, nothing ended up happening. But that's how that situation happened with Al. And to this day, like, like first, we well, obviously we have great energy with one yeah. another. Great dude, great dude. Yeah. Pure mm-hmm. person. You are right. Pure person, man. Awesome dude, man. I was just in Vegas with him like two years ago, and we. We we out together and uh you know you, you were thinking we were best of friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two good guys, man. <laughs> but that basketball make it competitive because I be fucking yeah. queue up every time we play. You know I'm <laughs> every time he getting this work. <laughs> hey, new, you know, new, you know this my oldest son right here, man. My first son. <laughs> I played against Chris Webber in the league my rookie year, and he had. He bust my ass bust your with ass. all <laughs> jump hooks. First person to bust his ass, yeah, OG, yeah. was your homeboy. You, you hear know, me? This is my guy. He bust my First ass person. with all jump hooks. I couldn't catch it. I couldn't time it. I couldn't use my athleticism. Then I played you. You were one of my favorites. And your one move that I took from you was like, every time you post up, you did a jump hook, you were fake. Yeah. <laughs> and that fucked up my rhythm. Because you were post up, you were fake. We might pump fake or you're a fake and just go straight up. So that was knocking timing off. And I was running, I'm, I'm steady trying to get your jump hook. I'm like, man, how I can get it. I added it to my game. You know how you still moves and so forth. Yep. Who taught you that yep. fake? Cause I felt like that was like your go-to move was to post up, I'm a fake. You don't know if I'm finna spin all the way or if I'm just gonna fake right. and jump hook. But it always mm-hmm. took the timing off of a defensive player. And I took that and added it to, my gumbo, <laughs> so, <laughs> so so say. So how was it? Uh, like, where did you get that move from? Yeah, man, great question. You know, like I wasn't a super athletic like you guys, man, and like footwork and fundamentals was what I had to you know have within my game in order to give myself an advantage and give myself an opportunity to go out there and compete. And I learned that move from a guy, and we all familiar with, and we know very well, Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale, like you talk about being a student of the game and studying and adding to your game. Like I learned it from Kevin and Kevin like was an architect when it came to the the post work back to the basket. Mm -hmm. And now like today, like (laughs) if you watch any of our games, Hunter Dickinson, like, you know, yeah, I've I've given him that. We work on that, you know, uh, my big fella, Austin Davis. Yeah. We work on that move. Yeah. They would jump hooking uh, all year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough yeah. move to, like, especially athletic dudes that yeah. is waiting the time to block your shot. Like, yeah. first of all, the jump hook is never going to go out of style, and it's always going to be one of the most effective moves, and it's tough to block. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the part. Yeah, I, I was I was just sick of that. I'm like, man, my, my five five guys, man, they jump hooking the shit out of me. <laughs> And I gotta stop, I can't stop it, so I gotta try not to let them just get the ball. And then, what? like I said, yours against Weber, what I noticed about you, no matter what you did, it always was that fake. And, that, and, I, and I realized that fake was timing. It's, it's, it's making the defensive player lose timing of what you doing. And I, I had to add that to it, and, and it, it was successful for me. That was one of the moves that I took from somebody and it worked with my game. Yeah. And you're a bad boy, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. You talk about people talk about KG. I'm like, yo, shoot, if I recall, they were like talking about you the young KG, right? Yeah. 
Yep, baby KG. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I remember you and McDonald's All American game. Killing just dunking him. everything, yeah, falling like, on his ass, trying to hang on the rim, falling horizontal <laughs> on his ass out there. Pogo stick, I man. I'm like, yo. <laughs> Bounced right back up and ran back down. Right. The I was sticks <laughs> and bones, though. <laughs> hey, hey, tell me this, though, because like you said, you you a competitor, you a, you know what I'm saying, you a champion. And how was it when, 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 when you won the, the the NBA championship, oh, like like like, how was that feeling of like? Because it was after a long ass journey for you. Like, how was that to really win it and be a, you know you the champion? I'm a champion. What was that feeling for you? Seventeen years, G. Seventeen years, G. Seventeen. Like that was amazing, bro. For like, there were times when I. I was about to retire. So I'm like, yo, like, I'm considered a loser, bro. I can't even win it all. You know? And then we went to the finals the year versus Dallas, and we lost in the finals 4-2 series. Like, I never forget. I, I went home, and I'm like, yo, man, I must be a loser. It must be me. I done lost <laughs> high school. I done lost two in the NBA, uh, in uh, college, and now I just lost in the NBA. But Rouse and Spo, you know, they – they wanted me to come back and join the team. And um, i never forget that summer. You talk about all of us in pain and we, we we feel that, you know, what we just experienced, that we couldn't wait for the season to start because we, we determined to get back. And our first game was versus Dallas. And at <laughs> Dallas, where they were getting their ring ceremony and we in the back, we steaming as we waiting to get mm. go out there to warm up to play the game. We steaming. We felt that was our ring. And that year we just, that game, first of all, we blew out Dallas by like 30, right. 30 or 40, I think it was. And then that season. The revenge tour started. The revenge tour. <laughs> like everybody about to get it. And uh, we finally won it. And we on the stage, man. And I'm like, yo, man, this is real. So I, I I recall going back in the back where it was time to like pop the champagne. And there were some guys that was about to grab some gargles. I'm like, hell no, I don't want no gargles. I want to feel that burn. I want <laughs> right. People that feel like the eyes burning, man. I remember watching on TV, man, like a lot of dudes winning. It. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, KG won it one year from Shy and Tony Allen when they won it and MJ when he was winning six of them and right. you know watching Magic when he won his and Cole you know winning his five and Shaq and all those guys I'm like yo man I just want to experience it I got the champagne it was burning but it was worth the burn man and I look back on that you know I've just that was the icing on the cake for the career because all I just wanted to be was just go out as a as a champion. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's sick right there. This is a little known. See, I could have been a part of that team. Remember, I was there a year before that when y'all lost the first year. I, I spoke, uh, Riley wanted me to remember that was the year when they got the big three. They only had one year deals for everybody, so I was part of that plan to get the to be on the one year deal thing. But then Orlando came in with a four year deal, and you already know Je Double was like Q. Yeah, you're going to get that four years, my boy. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and you know, he was like, you know, he's like, yeah, it's great. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna win one, but listen, you're gonna get them four years, my boy. <laughs> like, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> no doubt, I get it, Q. Explain, like, people don't know, and we always talk about this hoops environment that summertime uh, of, of getting that run and. I remember like you and the wars you and Twan Walker used to have, and you know the matchups and the and the runs we used to get with a good workout and the environment. You know, Tim kept the the riff raff and the bullshit out the gym, and it was strictly about this hoop and getting each other better. Like, how was hoops for you every summer? You came in for your not only for you your whole career, and you know you moving forward. Man, that was some of the best runs, like you mentioned earlier, the best runs. And you talk about getting prepared for the upcoming season, like hoops runs will prepare you for the upcoming season because in the off season, you're getting the best of the best that's flowing through Chicago. Um, Chicago, you know, being MJ, I remember that summer when MJ, when he was making his comeback, you know, the yeah. gym was flooded. You know, we had everybody <laughs> trying to play 
And it I ain't know, stupid. Yeah, man. I know if they were trying to be a groupie or they want to get some run in. But I guess we all was benefiting, right, fellas? Yeah. Yeah, straight up, straight it was up. crazy. Hoops did one sixty one blue. <laughs> we go get some eats, some grub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the best environment. And yes, sir. But you know, obviously with you two, you know, your talent level, uh, being in there, you know, J Jay Crawford. You know, you you touched on it early. You know, me and fans was the regulars. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Antoine Walker, you know, those competitive, you know, matchups. Uh, you know, you definitely going to be playing against another stud who's that either that dude on the uh, NBA team or he's a, he coming. a second or the third he, best player. He coming. Right? He's coming with <laughs> it. And, and you're going to hear about it. Yeah. And you don't want to sit on the floor and wait for the next team because you're going to probably have to wait another two or three games so those games was extremely competitive because you didn't want to sit and wait for them. So straight up, um, I'm talking about two and strong, two courts going, and none but ballers. <laughs> wow, that was some. That was some of the. That was some strong. of the best. That was some of the best hoop like ever. Like period. And like you know me, like especially my first couple years in the league. Like when I got back to hoops, that was my turn. It was like now I'm about to make everybody fucking pay because I ain't, I used to feel like I ain't get to play. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? When I was this season, I'd be like, all right. Where they at? Please come to Chicago this summer because now I'm going to really get to play how I play. I ain't got no coach holding me back. I ain't got this. Right. And then it's, like, I used to be ready. Boy, I'm telling you, like, season, because, you know, we was the Clippers, bro. We wasn't winning nothing. Two, two, three week mark, man. We sit in our cars and everything. Huh? As soon as we do them exit meetings, we gone. I'm back in mm -hmm. the playoffs going on. I'm at hoops yeah. going on. By the first round. After Memorial we Weekend, hoops. we in the hoops. So we before yeah. June. We are <laughs> getting that work in. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Jim deserted like a <laughs> like only thing coming through is draft pick. We ain't seeing y'all in August. We got two months in <laughs> every year, man. Keys do that shit. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's that. No playoffs, like yeah, that's no playoffs, oh, like boy. You, you got to put the work in, though. You still got to get the work in. Right. So we definitely yeah, used to be in there. The gym used to be deserted. Like damn. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is the one thing that I always. I can't say I, I. I tried to go about it like you did, but I didn't. I don't think I quite achieved it. You know how like you had a you had a way that you you know you still. People, we knew you was from Chicago, but you carried it a certain way. But then you could show it, and you could still be seen, kind of like I ain't really achieved the like being able to show it, but then still be seen as this upstanding person. Like how, like I, I know, I know what where you got it from. And I know what you know. What I'm saying, just talk about the toughness that's inside you that's been put on this. But I can remember it was something. Was it when you were with the Heat when you had to go up? pre-game and like yo oh. <laughs> yo like you know what I'm saying and I and like in that moment I was looking I was like yo <laughs> like I know what's happening right now but like just talk about being able to you know what I'm saying I don't know how you was able to 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 mesh the 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 professionalism but still be able to pull that Chicago out when you need to and let them know that it ain't never went nowhere yeah man it's uh I it's guess. a very unique trait that you <laughs> that you possess because, like me, like when the Chicago come out, it's out. I can't really right. take it back in now. Right. So you know what I'm saying? Like you, I you carry the whole different. Like, <laughs> you remember? I remember one your moment. moment. I, mean, I remember a couple <laughs> of your moments. I remember they both were New York moments. <laughs> one was with a team versus a teammate, and another one was versus an opponent, man, that was playing in Boston. I'm not gonna name his name, but I remember your moments. Cause you know, I'm like, yo, that's my young boy back there, man. That's my bro, man. Hey, y'all you know, better watch out. <laughs> but but you need some aid and assists. We here for you. <laughs> but, but you know, Q, man, I think it is, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I'm not gonna say I, I won every fight growing up, but you know, being light skin factor has always been that, you know, people mistake that. And then also people look at it, you know, when you got a smile on your face and you're being respectful with everyone. And they sometimes they will take that lightly. But where we come from is like when you reach that level where you step over that <laughs> that rope and you're trying to like, you know, really test a man's manhood, then I'm gonna see red. And when I get see red, it's gonna be tough to bring me back. But I'm gonna respect everyone. 
And whenever I feel you, I get disrespected, then that's the time when I got to, you know, I got to defend myself. But um, I think we got a chance to see that this past season <laughs> when I was coaching <laughs> on a tournament, <laughs> the Big Ten tournament. And I hate to bring that back up, but like, you know, that that was where, you know, I, I can't let no man draw the line. Draw that line, man, get in my space because once you're alive at one time, then he or others will feel they can do the same thing. And uh, at the same time, like, you know, we, we this is a certain respect level that it has to be, you know, regardless. Uh, and then that, you know, that respect level has to be on both levels <laughs> and reciprocated. The part I commend you on is that even though that happened, you 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 came right out immediately and you were you were accountable. You were accountable for yourself, you know what I'm saying, in front of your players and teammates. You told them that, you know, that wasn't, you know, the right way to handle it, although you shared light and gave insight into what happened and, and why it happened. And you, you know, so like you said, we all nobody's perfect and everything like that. But like I have to go out of my way to salute you for 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 being the way you are because you make it possible for for other guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. It's, it's plenty of guys that's retired from the NBA or played and, you know, would love to be coaching. And, you know, you I think it's another stigma out there that you and Big Pat go against because they say big men can't coach and all of that crap and blah, blah, blah. And so, I mean, the way that you guys, you, Stackhouse, all of the guys out there, anybody I'm missing is, you know, going out there coaching in the league and as well as in college being head coaches, y'all setting the table by the way you doing On the women's side, Because you know how people – on the yeah. absolutely on the women's side as well, but like you know how they look at us, Juwan. We come through the door to do whatever. The first thought is that uh, here come a player that think they're gonna be able to get it treated like a player. Yes. So like yes. the fact that you able to go in there and roll your sleeves up and really grind it out and show that, that I don't have none of that in me. I'm willing to work. I'm learning. Like everything you said earlier, like you got a learner's mentality, a growth mentality, all of those different things. That makes it so much easier for the next dude who deserves an opportunity like you and, and people that weren't getting those positions. Like, you see, it ain't no secret. Like, Mike Woodson got the job. He'd yeah. been a head coach. He got that job completely, I feel like, based upon your success that you had just had. And they looking at it like, man, we could try and catch some of that excitement in the bottle. He's our alma mater and all of that stuff, alumni of our school, a prestigious dude. So I feel like when... It, it, it needs to be highlighted that you going out there doing things the right way, even from when you were at the heat, you know what I'm saying? Doing things the right way, going about it the right way, grinding and, and, and really working. Cause you know me, I'm a scout and you know me, Luke, I'm always all up in the business over there. And I'd be asking like, what's going on? Every single thing I ever heard, Juwan doing this, he doing great at this, he working at that, he's learning. He's, and then it's like, you continue to be that example for me to how to, you know what I'm saying, go about everything I go about and showing me that, that this is the right way to go because look at this. This this is what you've been looking at the whole time and he's continuing to, to change the game and prosper and do more great things because I didn't never see you being a college coach and winning college national coach of the year and doing all of these great things and, and recruiting and getting recruiting classes and all that. But I mean, obviously it makes sense because you're one of us. Who wouldn't want to go play for somebody that's been through literally everything that you wish you could go through. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't, you didn't been places that people aspire to get to and want to. So, I mean, I just feel like that need to be said, OG, cause, cause I, I really know that that's impacting the way that this is going being done in the future. Man, I appreciate that, man. Thank you for acknowledging it. You know, I just always said this, man, when, when I got this job, you know, it's bigger than me it's, and it's not about me. It's about, you know, the guys that you just touched on, the guys that are look like me and, and want to have in this opportunity, been working so hard, um, haven't had a chance yet, guys that are looking forward to having the opportunity. And for me to come in, be trusted by um, our AD, who's someone who looks like me, um, mm -hmm. and to go out on a limb and how he got beat up in the media for choosing me as his head coach to run this program. Um, I, I go back to my grandmother and how I was raised. I'm like, yo, I can't F this up. Mm -hmm. I can't because, you know, like there's a lot of folks that depend on, you know, me to do it the right way. Um, their livelihoods is, has been in my hands, like my assistant coaches, um, you know, they, their livelihoods is in my hands. Uh, you know, and I haven't gotten to the student athletes yet, but our AD 
Um, and then there, you know, guys that are either coming from the NBA level or guys that are in college that have been coaching on different, you know, schools, different universities, different conferences that's been passed over and passed over, former players that's coming in. Um, I got to do the right thing, man. I got to, I got to grind. I got to work. I got to learn, keep learning, keep growing, keep grinding. Um, I love for them to keep counting me out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go with it. <laughs> let's get it. I'm competitive. I'm like, yo, y'all really don't know. MJ ain't the only competitive one out here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Straight up. I, I like all, like, that's what we do. That's where we come from. The, the, the city, man, we, we prideful, man. We also, we, we got a chip on our shoulder. Yeah, we all have egos. Yeah, I got an ego too. Um, but I'm not going to like allow what, you know, I hear from the naysayers, like, dictate uh, how I supposed to do it, how they feel they want me to do it their way. Now, um, we've done this before, fellas. We've been doing this since we were six years old, man. And uh, basketball is evolving, and I'm going to try to evolve as well. The uh, Jawan Howard Foundation, what made you start it, and what is yeah. it all about? Well, um, I started back in 1994, and, you know, my thing was – Growing up the way we did, uh, you know, underprivileged families uh, didn't have much, but where we had, you know, we we were able to, you know, survive and, you know, looking in the neighborhoods on how the other young families that are struggling out here, I want to do wherever I can and try to help them make a difference in the community, as well as uh, educational, where uh, do wherever we can from a, a sense of helping uh, promote you know, literacy. Uh, within the inner city. So that's why, that was my why on starting the foundation, uh, giving back to not only in Chicago area, but for teams that, you know, in cities that I've lived uh, with uh, underprivileged families by, you know, coat drives, um, um, as well as um, Thanksgiving meals, and, um, promoting, like I said, literacy earlier. I mean, it was from the heart, man, because I know yeah, that's yeah. what my grandmother would have wanted me to do mm -hmm. uh, because of that's how who she was. And that's how she taught myself and my other family members on, you know, being able to serve others. And so that's why. And that was my biggest why. And so uh, to this day, you know, now being a head coach, at, you know, at the university, um, my, you know, being involved with the um but my foundation is very limited because of there's so many NCAA rules on how and what you can do uh, through your foundation on helping, you know, yeah. families and kids of that are seventh grade or higher. It's <laughs> so many red tapes. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I can't even, I hadn't even thought uh, about that, but I could imagine. That's the worst thing about the job because I love my job. And I don't even look at it as a job, but that's one of the things that I, I had to really separate myself from was my foundation now that I'm a uh, head coach at a university. Speaking on you saying like why you how you came back to college to, you know, recapture to try to get the title that you couldn't win when you was playing, like I, I can remember when y'all, you know, when y'all won the the Big Ten championship and I'm sitting there like I'm I'm hyped. I literally was recording on my IG story, like look at my dog and then like for me to see you get that moment with your guys and then you hit the cash pad, like just tell me for you, like from way back when you was in that hallway hitting that drink, cause that was the whole, it, it was just playing like a reel in my head. Like this man that went from, from being there himself and doing that dance in the hallway to the, to the, to the, uh, you know, to the cameras. And now here you are all these years later, back at home at your college with, with a group of kids and you doing this on this stage, like, how did that feel for you? Man, Q, I'm getting chills, man. Goosebumps right yeah. now, man. Because it was a great feeling, man. It was. Um, you know, because you can't you can't script it any better. Um, yeah. You know, being a student athlete here and, you know, being counted out uh, by many, um, whether you've been counted out by, you know, the hood or you're, you're getting counted out by the you know, media, uh, you're getting counted out by your opponents. And for us to accomplish what we were able to accomplish as student athletes and as a freshman to go to the final four, that was strong. And then now fast forward, you know, I, I become a head coach here at my alma mater and I've never been a head coach before. 
and been on the NBA level as an assistant for six years and your critics, you're going to have critics yeah. and, you know, that's a part of it. And, you know, I hear it, I heard it where, oh man, he never coached before. You know, this is a publicity stunt for the Michigan and being able to hire, you know, a, a fab five and <clears throat> player, former fab fiber, and, you know, just going to sell tickets. And, you know, does he know how to coach on a collegiate level? And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I got to prove myself. That's okay. I've done this before, you know? <laughs> I've also played basketball since I was six years old. Yeah, so right. if I recall, the ball is still orange. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, it still takes five people to go out there and play, yeah. you know, on the offensive end and defensive end. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I'm yeah. just going to also learn. I'm, I'm going to make mistakes as I coach, like I'm human. I'm also have a growth mindset, the willing to learn. But um, we're going to be competitive. Yeah. And, this year, uh, you know, last year we didn't get a chance to play in a tournament because it got season ended because of uh, yeah. you know the, the pandemic. Uh, but uh, we were on the road then before injury, and so this year we're fortunate enough to win the, the Big Ten championship. And I had told the guys back in June we first came back, start training, uh, trying to have a season you know, while this pandemic is going on. The yo man, when we step in this gym. It's on, we fight for three championships, Big Ten, Big Ten Tournament, and NCAA. If any of you don't believe it, let me know now. I will find another school for you. And I will make up a story just to say, hey, you know what? You decided to transfer because you feel that this is not the place for you. But I'm going to let you know this. We're not for everyone. So I'm going to make you guys uncomfortable. Are yeah, you willing yeah. to get uncomfortable? And they all bought in. The staff was on board. And from day one, man, we were building to win championships. And it was in, engraved in our minds. And we believed it. And that's where, as the season started to progress, and then we started to, you know, catch a little, you know, fire. We had good health on our side. And um, mm -hmm. our second game, we played at, what was it, at Maryland on uh, New Year's Eve, the 31st, and we won that game at Maryland. I think that's when maybe th the staff started believing it. <laughs> like we got some, I had belief in it from day one. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody think I was crazy or I was unrealistic, but I say, we got a, we got enough here. And uh, be able to share that moment now with, with our guys and uh, on dancing and, you know, winning in a uh, Big Ten championship and for my son to be there and he the one that hyped me up about, hey, let's you know, he started doing the cash patch, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, let's get it. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it. Right it up. Yeah. My son hyped me up, man. <laughs> With the battery in the play. There you go. Yeah, man. And then we got that tournament, bro. You know, it was like the bubble. Let's go. Let's make the best out of this bubble. You know, and that's another thing, too. Like, this bubble, we got to embrace this. Like, this is your condo, your, you know, your apartment. You know, yeah, I, I had our guys, man, making up their beds, changing their sheets every week. You know, like right, yeah. Lynn is like, "Yo, you gonna get comfortable here?" Yeah. You know, you know, we're not about to be excited about going back to our dorms or our apartments. I told my wife, "I'm not seeing you until <laughs> six weeks from now." So get you, right. to, let's go. I'm locked in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Straight up. Let me uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I know you was assistant coach and. You know, when you're assistant coach, your dream is to become a head coach in the NBA. Like, how hard was it to change your path and just try to go and be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go to Michigan and I'm going to be the coach there. I'm going to try to be a college coach. Like, how was it to change your path from trying to be an NBA coach to going to college? There was only one college that I if I wanted to go and coach in college if there was a job that was available if they was trying to as people say give you the bag you know and if it was having to be a different school other than Michigan and I would have stayed on that Miami Heat staff and continue to keep growing yeah. and learning under coach Spo uh, because I was very happy with where I was at yeah um you know once you're part of that Miami Heat culture you know, family. For it's life. family for life, baby. Yeah. It's just like the, <laughs> bad boys like, for you know, life, <laughs> man, or or like the uh, Godfather, man, yeah. with Don Corleone, man. Like when you in, you in. Yeah. And 
love you, man. They're going to take care of you and they're going to they're going to grow with you and help you grow. And like, they're going to serve you. And that being said, um, the Michigan job came available and I'm like, yo, I told my wife, I'm like, yo, coach Beeline left. She, she, she saw like the smile on my face. (laughs) (laughs) Keep in mind, like fellas, I was, I was like now when coach Beeline made his announcement to, to choose Cleveland Cavaliers at that week, that day, I woke up that morning preparing for my interview for the Minnesota Timberwolves to be their head coach. So my mindset, my focus started to focus a little bit more on Michigan. Like, oh, wow, that's, that's <laughs> that, that job, man, that sounds very inviting, you know. And I always said it, and people ask me if I ever want to be in coaching, if I go, if, do I ever want to consider college level? And I've always said, you know, only one school, and that's Michigan. But I was preparing to be a head coach in the league. And the one year I had three interviews and uh, got passed. And that was okay, cool, no problem. You know, I got to work a little hard. I got to grow a little bit more. That's cool. You know, that's mm-hmm. where we from. We yeah. from that, right. that shy town. You know, like, yo, we're going we, we gonna to roll up our sleeves and, and, and you know, prove ourselves. Let's let's do it. So then the next year, you know, the season, the NBA season passed. And um, you know, once the Miami Heat season was over, you know, my agent hit me up and I had three more, you know, interviews for three different teams. And uh, like I said, Michigan job, the first two I didn't get jobs. And that was, uh, man, I can't, oh, what, no, what was it? I forget the name of the team's gonna come to me later. But um, now I look back on it, and you know, I made the right decision. I mean, I really did. And um, I'm, I'm forever debt to the Miami Heat culture and Coach Spo. Um, I always say this, man, that I'm part of the Coach Spo's tree. Yeah. And he's so he's so humble, man. He don't even look at it like, yo, I That's got it. Man. You know what I mean, That's man? man yeah. you know, championship coach, Hall of Fame coach. You know, he's yeah. definitely be in the Hall of Fame. You know, Easy. Coach Bo just so chill, man. <laughs> Straight up. That's what makes him great, man. I love it, man. T- tell me this. How did you, because, you know, I, obviously you, you finished your career, playing career there in Miami. How was that transition into like, all right, I'm a coach? I remember sitting there, I talked to Spo about, you know, the staff and all that. And he was telling me, like, I mean, Juwan, you know, when Juwan started, he was like, you know, he didn't know, like, when you told, he told you he was going to be coaching the, the summer league team and stuff like that. Like, how did you get <laughs> to the point to like, like, all right, I'm playing, but now I'm about to slide over here? Because it was like, same as you went straight from playing to the bench. Like, at what point did that come about or did those talks come about? Or did, did Spo approach you or did you approach him? Yeah, the, um, the first the, the conversation and the talk started, uh, it was after we won our second championship. And um, David Fizdale, he was an assistant on the staff. And, Fizz. Yeah, man, Fizz, bro. And Fizz and Tasha, Tasha is his wife. They came over to the house to hang out with me and Janine, my wife, and we sitting in the in the spot and we talking and we chopping it up. You know, Fizz, man, he got that that personality, mm-hmm. you know, that infectious type, you know, uh, way yeah. of how he gonna communicate things to you and he gonna sell it to you, boy. And that's gonna be, you know, he gonna make it sound great, which he, he speaks his mind, he speaks his heart. And uh, mm-hmm. Fizz is like, man, we'd love to have you on the staff. We need you, man. You know, the amount of respect that these guys have for you. You've been in the locker room with them. You've been in the trenches with them and your voice matters and they, you know, our staff don't have no, no one like yourself on it. And I'm like, yo, man, I don't know about that, you know, because I never wanted to be on the dark side, you know, the dark <laughs> side, you know, we, we was like, when they look at you on the dark side and players don't really want to mess with you or trust you. Yeah. 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 And watch then what I'm I like, say around him now. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, man, I done been in the trenches with these dudes. I built relationships, man. And I don't want them to look at me as like, you know, I'm some snitch or I'm, I'm not with them or for exactly. them. And I'm like, yo, uh, Bron and, you know, Bosh and, and D-Wade, man, and, and uh, UD, man. I'm like, yo, these are my brothers, man. I'm like, nah, I, can't, I don't know about this. Let me think about it. So then um, I met with Rouse for an exit interview. And Rouse had already knew that I was either considering like joining his like uh, staff as far as being on the, um, the front office staff. And he mm-hmm. talked about like being a recruit. I mean, not recruit. I'm sorry. Um, um, scout. scout, scout, going on the road and scout, uh, and then working my way up to you know 
be a GM someday and follow his path. And then, you know, Rouse was like, well, you know what? Spo had talked about, you know, you joining the staff and I see a lot of coaching in you. I see a lot of teaching in you. And one thing about if you're out there on the road as a scout, you're gonna be out there by yourself and, and different hotels and them hotels is not as inviting as it was when you stand at the yeah. four seasons as a player. He started telling me that story and he said, hey, check this out. I'm going to Africa for two weeks and me for vacation. And when I get back from my vacation, let's meet. That'll give you two weeks to decide if you want to, you know, go the scouting route and, and join the front office or you know, be an assistant and start player development. So I gave him some thought, talked over my wife. I really didn't talk it over with my wife. She, you know, she, she kind of still probably salty at me about this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I talked it over with her, but I told her the story and uh, I said, you know, I'm gonna go with the coaching route. And I felt that there was this was what I needed. Spo felt he he wanted and need me. It's tough to turn down any one of them, but at the end of the day, I'm still being a Miami Heat family. And I made that transition into coaching. And I, I was committed to it. I always said, if I'm going to go and coach, I'm not going to play against my players in one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to do shooting games with them because I do not want the players to think that I I'm, I still want to be a player. I still want to get checks like a player. Right. You know, I'm serious about coaching. So I'm going to let, I'm going to shag rebound, rebound for them, shag balls for them, whatever they need me to do. But I ain't going to be playing no five-on-five -five setting or no three-on-three. -three. I'm not going to be that coach. Speaking of Miami, and uh, like you said, you say UD, like uh, you play with teams and you was that 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 key veteran for teams. Like teams these days don't have that veteran guy on their team. Like at the end of your career, extend it a little bit longer because you know I always felt like the team that you was on, the reason they signed you was to to keep these guys in order and keep the team fresh. See a journey. OG triple OG. You see a guy like uh. Udonis Hassel, he a last of a dying breed for him to be like wow. on a team and be there and not be the so-called guy that's really playing minutes, but the guy that's right. on the team that's keeping it together. Like uh, speak on Udonis Hassel and, and you seeing him from a young fella Man. to now where he's at now, a, a nice veteran like you were. <laughs> Man, OG. <laughs> Man, I'm the biggest UD fan, man. <laughs> and I know we all got some amazing UD stories, Straight but up. I got a lot of love for that dude, man. And I always tell like people today that more NBA teams need a Udonis Haslam because they are not available no anymore. Or teams don't want to have veterans around. I don't know. Like I, I'm not in those locker rooms, but the UD on what he does for the franchise and that team, he keeps them together. Yeah. You know, he's mm -hmm. and the respect that they have for him, which is he's earned that respect because of what he's done in the league as a player, three time champion, um, Mr. Miami. You know, he can be the mayor of Miami if he really wants to. Whenever yeah, that time right. comes, um, the organization, you know, Mickey and Madeline, they love you, D. You know, um, Co Coach Rouse, I still call him Coach Rouse. Um, all, and Spo, they know about like what the guy has sacrificed throughout his career. And mm -hmm. yeah, the organization have gave back to him, but they know, know that UD is all of a giving person, man. He got the biggest heart ever. Ever. Word. Oh man, I'm gonna tell you a quick ever. UD story, man. <laughs> wow, I, I could get choked up talking about this one. <laughs> I, I was an assistant uh, on the staff and, you know, UD has a routine and he's always gonna, call me, you know, whenever he's ready to get his game routine on, or even in practice. And I'm going to rebound for him. I'm set screen. What the hell he want me to do? I'm going to do it. So uh, he had a routine and he always was one of the last guys I would work out. But before he come out on the court, he would have his gear on and he'll have a, a um, Starbucks drink ready for me. <laughs> he'll bring me my Starbucks drink. Mm. From one of his Starbucks, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, listen to me on this one. Straight up. Like, yeah. This man owns Starbucks, and he have his own drink that he put in his locker. But he comes out on the court, and he knows I'm out there waiting on him to train him, to get him ready for the game, get him warmed up, whatever. But he have a drink in his hand, bringing it to me, which he did not have to do that. And I never yes, asked, but yeah. that's the heart that the man has. So 
if you do call me anytime for asking me or need anything or just even be somewhere or need some money, whatever, he, he probably don't know need your money. I'm going <laughs> right. to pick up the phone, yeah. you know, and, and be there for him, not just because of that drink, but just because of the man has a, he's an amazing person, dad, family man. Um, and he's the ultimate teammate that those young guys need to appreciate because when he's gone, boy, it's gonna be a big void within that organization. But yo, I and I and and I take it a step further because I agree with everything you say and co-sign that. But on another side, that people don't understand, and it's unique to UD in his situation, but it shows his true value. Like it's been a, a un 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 amount unmentionable about of times that he's like him and his ties to the to the city has gotten his teammates out of scenarios which they would not probably right. have gotten out of safely in another situation had it not right. been for UD. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how he moving. It's just like you said, it's never been a time where like, I don't care if, you, if, if, if I go to Miami, I do not care. UD is going to demand that, 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 that I'm straight and make sure that you let him know that he did and whatever you need, he going to send somebody to look out for you and it don't matter. Food, whatever it is, he going to make sure you straight. And if you ever in any type of jam, I promise you, it's going to be good. <laughs> like UD, UD for real, like I'm for, like for real, one of the most solid individuals you ever will come across. Yeah, They're really right. a real solid good dude. Special person, man. Special. All right, man, that's a wrap, man. It's been too dope. OG, we appreciate you pulling up on us, man. You already know how we feel about you. This was dope. We appreciate it. Come on, man. Hey, anytime for y'all, brother. I love y'all, man. <laughs> y'all are my young brothers, bro. Much <laughs> yes, love. Sir, the love right is up. real. <laughs>